Hi, I'm Dr. Divina Lopez, a board certified pediatrician with over 10 years of experience in pediatrics. And you are listening to Dancing into Parenthood. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dancing into Parenthood. I am so happy to have Mr. Cameron over here. Cameron is originally from Ashtabula. Did I say it correctly? Ashtabula. <laughs> Ashtabula, Ohio. He told me that that means river of many fish, correct? That is correct. All right. And he currently resides in Columbus, Ohio. He's a high school counselor and creator of the blog Supportive Fathers. And that's the reason why I invited him on to um, the podcast because I'm always looking for avenues that are supporting dads because I know that dads want to be more involved in their families. And actually, Cameron has a two-year-old little girl at home who's a Taurus like me. So I know she's not that easygoing. She's probably a little mm -hmm. stubborn and a little difficult to deal with, um, yeah. like all two-year-olds, because that's a normal, a normal toddler kind of thing where they resist so much and they want to be independent. But I can tell you that as a Taurus, you're gonna deal a lot with that throughout her life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I know you have a lot of fun with her. She must be, um, you know, bringing a lot of joy and happiness into your life. And I know that your life has probably changed tremendously um, since she came into your life mm -hmm. and you became a dad. Um, so in Supportive Fathers, he explores topics, um, that other dads encounter in their everyday life. And I think that's really important because these are things that have been kind of forgotten, or I don't know if anyone really cared to share these stories. I know men sometimes are just considered more um, to themselves and they don't really express certain things, or, you know, maybe that's just culturally what men have been taught to do. And so, you know, I'm hoping that through the podcast and, you know, through talking to other dads and Cameron and having um, this information available to dads, I want them to feel like, you know, let's talk about this. Let's get you more included into the family because you are one of the most important people in the family. And so I don't want um, dads mm -hmm. to feel excluded. I think the more inclusive we are, uh, the more that they will feel um, happy and you know, more comfortable just to be involved, which I think would make moms super happy too, because we want to be a unit all together functioning as a team. And that is so important. You know, I think if dads were more involved, that moms would be, I mean, excited and just so happy to have that extra support. And I think that would make their relationship a lot better too. So thank you, Cameron, for coming on to the podcast. And I know that you have a lot of great information to share. But, you know, first and foremost, I want to say thank you because I know he's not even at home. He was at a wedding and he decided to come and join um, the podcast today, even from his time, you know, away from home. So I really appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm I'm really excited to uh, be on your podcast and have this conversation with you and uh, the rest of your listeners. Uh, uh, but yeah, I was uh, I was thinking about this all weekend in, in anticipation. I decided to stay an extra day here to hang out with the in-laws because uh, we're mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania right now. But uh, but yeah, I wouldn't change it for anything. Good, so. good. Well, I'm really happy for you taking out this time. And, you know, one of the things that I want to first, let's talk about why you even created the blog. Okay. So uh, the reason why I created Supportive Fathers is I, I'm, a, I, I'm a high school counselor. And, mm -hmm. and even being uh, in the world of counseling uh, and talking with students and talking uh, with different males and things like that, uh, us males tend to not want to open up about uh, different things that we experience, whether it's through depression or anxiety, or even like we're kind of told not to 
be too excited about something. And I kind of want to change that narrative and uh, have other men own the fact that, you know, I have feelings. I'm a, I'm a human being just like anyone else. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, pro- help provide any kind of insight or uh, maybe provide a different perspective for other guy, uh, for other men. And I'm not even just the only person on my blog that's even writing. I want to others to go ahead and help contribute as well because they might right. provide a perspective for myself. I'm like, I never considered that. And mm-hmm. I, I want supportive fathers to turn into a collection of voices for other men to, uh, through whatever experience they have, um, to be able to have a reference uh, so that way they can understand I'm not the only person that's going through through this whatever issue. Um, the whole journey to, of fatherhood. <laughs> oh, oh, exactly, exactly. We yeah. tend to internalize those things, and I just want to. Um, I just want other men to understand that hey, I'm I, I'm here with you. You know, through a blog, I'm here with you, and I understand what you're going through, and it's okay to not be okay if that's the case. Right, right. I mean, I I guess because you have a background in counseling and everything, it must be something that kind of came naturally to you because you're already helping out like the teens at your school, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So this is probably something that's like very natural, very easy for you to talk about. How do you think that... um, you became so like in tuned with yourself or so I want to say comfortable with actually like talking about uncomfortable topics. Oh, that's a good question. I, I think a lot of that has to do probably, probably with like how I was raised. Mm -hmm. Uh, My mom um, often had all kinds of talks with my sister and I, uh, from a young age, um, obviously some of the talks were age appropriate, uh, mm-hmm. but nonetheless, uh, my mom would constantly check in with us and encourage us to uh, tell us how we feel. And if we're feeling, if we were feeling down, if we're feeling upset or happy, just let her know what's going on, um, because she is always our support. And if anything um, happened, or if anything, if we were I don't know if we were feeling anxious, our mom had our backs and she would Mm -hmm. try her best. And so uh, to kind of rid of uh, rid us of that anxiety. And so for me, it was repeated uh, practice to be able to open up about how I feel um, and not internalize those things. I mean, I'm human. So there's times where I might internalize those things. But I do have that uh, background where I where. um, growing up where it was encouraged to go ahead and tell it talk about what's going on instead of you're a man you should you know no crying you're a man you shouldn't have those feelings it wasn't like that for us at least for myself and right. so uh, I guess years upon years of practice of that that it just comes naturally to be able to talk about whether it's a comfortable topic or if it's an uncomfortable topic um, I mean I still get anxiety sometimes Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. to talk about those things, but I understand that uh, putting it out in the open is a lot better than uh, internalizing those feelings. Yeah, feeling the feels is important. And I think, you know, I mean, you were lucky that you were brought up in a home where communication was encouraged because that doesn't mm-hmm. always happen, right? right. Uh, and I think you, you told me that your dad wasn't really in your life when you were younger uh no he was not he's in my life now um mm-hmm. after i had graduated from college but uh when i was younger uh nope it was just uh my mom and then uh my stepfather was also a part of my life too but as far as my mom she was a single parent for a while uh mm-hmm. she had worked two jobs and up until she actually uh tore i believe she tore a rotator cuff on her shoulder okay. um and so, but yeah, I, I, I was pretty much raised by my mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was another motivation for supportive fathers because I'm so passionate about being a father and uh, mm-hmm. being there to help support my daughter. And I want to be there for every moment uh, and also express to men like how uh, wonderful it is to be a father and be able to 
I don't know, go to a father daughter dance. I'm looking, I'm totally looking forward to that. I'm like, yeah. Wait, <laughs> they're so cute. Uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, yeah, the, the yeah. thing with you is that you actually took something that wouldn't be, you know, a very positive experience, but you made a positive experience out of it through your fatherhood journey, which I really, I have to applaud you for that because you didn't continue the cycle, you know, which right. so many people play the victim role. And then they're just like, well, this happened to me. And then, you know, the, it just continues. So, you know, it takes a lot of courage for you to say, you know, let me embrace this and let me make the best, you know, experience that I can for myself, for my daughter. And, you know, right. you have so many things that you're looking forward to, like you're already thinking about father daughter dances and stuff like that. Like that's really sweet because you know, you, especially, you know, being a father to a, a young girl is, is really vital for her because you're her role model of what a man should be doing or how they should be treating her and stuff like that. So you're mm -hmm. already preparing her for some really, really good experiences for herself as she grows up. Um, and that's really important. I think sometimes fathers don't even realize how much their children are looking to them for guidance and mm -hmm. just to see how relationships are between um, between people, like you know, that's a that's a huge huge role that men play in their children's life, and I think sometimes they don't realize that. Like they think the mom is the one who's going to be so involved with them, and the you know the kids only focus on mommy all the time. Yes, like kids do need their moms a lot, and moms have a certain role because we are nurturing. Um, but that doesn't mean that the men cannot be involved as much or even more you know i think you told me that you're so involved with your daughter that you're the one that primarily takes her to the doctor and yeah. you know and that was like something uh well something that you continue to like struggle with because in even in the office like and i'm i'm guilty of it myself like we just always focus on mom and because mom usually knows all the information for the kids and mom is the one that usually has all the records and the files or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So we easily just always call the mom or just even look at mom when we're at the visit all together. Um, so, you know, I think the two of us were talking about how, like, even at the schools, like we need to change that culture so that we right. can have people focus more on the dads too, so that the dads can feel included because that's also partly our fault that we just like kind of, you know, take dad out of the picture. We just really focus on mom all the time. Um, but talk about your experiences with that, because I know that you're the one that primarily takes your daughter to the doctor and, you know, how did that make you feel? Well, I, I, you and I had that conversation, uh, for myself, um, at times I felt frustrated, uh, because, it went, and it just worked out that I take my daughter with, cause it works better with my work schedule and, uh, versus my wife's. And, um, I can say like when I'm filling out the forms, like you have all this information for mom and then it's like a tiny, tiny little box for dad. For dad. <laughs> yes. It, it's just basic. I, I, like I could just put my name and my phone number and that's that. And even after the doctor's appointments and just that little tiny box and I uh, express, uh, express my, um, I don't want to use the word concern, but I express to them that I want them to contact me yeah. uh, or call me or email me uh, first, just because I'm the one who's taking her to the appointments. And I remember the one, uh, our one doctor's office, uh, I had to tell them four times, like, "Hey, please contact me first. And I get, and I understand that it's, uh, just in, culturally we call mom. I mean, I work at a school, and I can tell you, first person who we email, first yeah. person who we call is mom, because um, yeah. oftentimes mothers are the ones that are, are involved in the school and are involved in going to the doctor while dad might be at work or. Yeah. Um, or just dad doesn't do that. I mean, I think we also touched, uh, talked about just 50 years ago, fathers weren't even in the delivery room. In the delivery room, right. Yeah. Uh, and so, and, you know, we're only a couple of generations from that. So this is going to be something that's going to be, um, I'd imagine, slower moving. But I, I do want to share that I, uh, I want, you know, as fathers, we are part of our children's lives and we're going to, be the ones going to the doctor's appointments and going to the school or even being able to join the PTO uh, or mm -hmm. 
whatever parent organization at the school, I plan to do that myself. Yeah. Um, I might be the only father, but that's okay with me. I, I just want to be with my, be there for my daughter and, uh, every step of the way, just because I just want to be an evolved parent and let her know that, Hey, I'm here for you. And I have, I have, I have your back no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sweet. That's really nice. And, and I mean, you know, I think because for moms, it's, is expected from them like we don't even think about it twice and from dads it's like do you want to do this or not um but i do i or i have noticed you know i've been practicing pediatrics now for like 10 years um i've noticed from my very like beginning practicing as a as a pediatrician to now i've noticed that the new parents they at least the dads, I really see that they want to be more involved. I see them coming to the visits more. Uh, I do see that whole like shift happening. And so um, for me, I, you know, like even when I do those little TikTok videos and stuff like that, I, I do them like thinking of the dads because I want to make it fun for them. I want them to feel like, okay, I got this. Let me get in there and help mom out and, you know, feel comfortable with the whole thing because I know sometimes it's just like a little bit of a lack of confidence. And especially like if moms are very critical, you know, I always tell moms, like, just let a dad do it his way. You're never going to um, be able to get another person to do something exactly the way you do and you have to be kind of comfortable with it because mm -hmm. the, the child is going to be just fine like your, a dad is always going to do the right thing for their kid they just have their own style and so you have to kind of embrace that um you know and I'm sure it took you some time to figure out like what to do when you first had your daughter unless you're like around kids all the time which that's not the reality for most people most people right. are like haven't been around kids for forever and then they have a newborn all of a sudden and it's like okay what do i do <laughs> how, how do i even like change a diaper uh how do i bottle feed or you know when when do i need to give her over to breastfeed or anything like that like you know it's just a learning curve and so mm -hmm. you know once you get to that level of comfort it comes to you naturally but it takes time for everyone to like figure it out nobody really knows what they're doing at first and you know even for myself i remember okay i was a, a pediatrician for a few years before i had my son but when i got home with him i was like oh my goodness what do i do now you know it's that little shock that happens to you when you get home from the hospital that you're like okay um it's just me and the baby now <laughs> what what mm -hmm. what do we do uh you know I talk about or tell us a little bit, you know, about how you felt with that whole transition of like going to just being a couple to actually having a baby at home. Like, how was well, that culture shock for you? <laughs> well, that that whole time period was crazy. To say it's a the blur, least. right? <laughs> uh, it was a blur. Well, I was in grad school at the time, and I was starting my internship, yeah. and we were living in Erie, Pennsylvania at the time, and I knew that we weren't going to live in Erie because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I intended to move. And then we found out that uh, we were respecting it. Then I was like, oh gosh, this is going to be crazy. And um, and so I finished out my internship that that whole, you know, I was there for the whole school year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I could tell you, so like my college graduation, well, not my, well, from grad school was uh, May 12th. We actually thought that she was coming a couple of days before that <laughs> uh, and that she we would have taught, brought her to the graduation, but um, it was a false alarm. So I, I graduated May 12th and then May 17th, she was here and then we were and I had already accepted my job in Virginia and we were going to be moving on June 30th. So it was like a oh, big wow. rolling um, for one, <laughs> us being new parents and on top of that moving a couple like six out six and a half hours away from our families and wow. so uh like i said like that, that's so that whole time period was such a crazy so crazy transition because one we're learning a whole new state and a whole new way of different things and living in pennsylvania and living in virginia is completely different completely you know, different we, yeah uh, culturally and everything else and then on top of that we have this newborn and I can remember the specifically answer your question 
uh, I can remember, even though I've been around babies, I've been around kids uh, as a teacher and now I'm a counselor, um, it's still, as a father, you're kind of like, okay, do I, you're a little stiff at first, you know, you're yeah. kind of like, I don't want the baby's head to fall back too far, <laughs> or uh, how do I know when to birth the baby? Um, I always see dads holding them like, oh my God, I'm like, relax, relax, they're not going to break, but they just like, they don't know what to do, they feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh yes, it is very, because you, you know, you're, you, I guess in our minds, and I, at least for myself, and I, I, and I'm sure other men probably feel this way. You build this up in your mind. It's like that you, you know, when you're sending out a package in the mail, uh-huh. and you see that fragile sign. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> like glass wrapped all over. <laughs> and that's our children. We basically view our children like this glass face in the box in the mail, and we don't yeah. want to make sure we want to make sure we don't hurt them or break them right. or anything. And right. so, yeah, and I can tell you that you know that's a lot of anxiety and. I, I don't know. I don't think necessarily women put that pressure. We put the pressure on ourselves. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've seen both. I've seen like some moms that are like so critical of everything that the dad does. And I, I, I mean, I'm guilty of doing stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty like, Oh my God, it's my baby. Like it, it's the most important thing in my life. Like, please. <laughs> Um, so I get it. And I mean, I have to talk to myself, like, just relax. It's okay. But I know how tough I was on my son's dad that I'm like, when I see other women doing it, I couldn't catch myself at that moment. Because when Mm -hmm. you're in it, you don't even realize what you're doing. But now when I see it, or when moms ask me for advice of like, what can I do in order to get dad more involved and stuff? I always let them know, like, let dad do it his way. Because his style is not going to be your style. You just have to allow it and let him develop his own style um, without you feeling like you're on top of him all the time or nagging him about certain things because then he's going to get turned off to it and he's not going to want to do it. So if you want Mm -hmm. someone's help, you kind of have to allow someone to just help you in their way that they know how to. And so, you know, that's usually my advice for anybody who needs help from anyone, but you know, I do see it sometimes where the moms are just like yelling at the dads and I'm like, don't do that because then he's not going to want to help out. Even if he has good intentions, you're just like kind of turning him off to the whole thing. So you have to allow people to do things their way and be okay with it. That does make a lot of sense. I mean, I can, I can say that I have some experience with that and you know, I've done that with my wife and she's done it with me and, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, allowing people to figure it out on their own because they're going to make it work at some point. Exactly. Um, uh, and, and I think for me, uh, with my daughter, it took me a couple of weeks to really get comfortable <laughs> holding her. I mean, at the, and I, and, you know, like I said, you just you want to make sure you support her head and everything. And it's just like, you're just so stiff. And um, I've had friends that tell, told me that he didn't, Unless, like, his wife put his child in her his lap. He didn't hold his baby for, like, the first yeah. few months. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, by the time you feel comfortable with it, they're fine. <laughs> like, you don't yes. even need to worry about supporting them so much. They're just, like, you know, on their own. So that, that's always how kids are. Like, as soon as you figure it out, they're onto another stage of something. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, it really, it really does take that time. Like, you have to be forgiving with yourself also because if you criticize yourself that much, then you're never going to enjoy it and you want to enjoy your kids. So you have to just right. be like, okay, you know, I'm not going to know everything. There's no expert at this. Um, you know, I'm just going to try my best. And I think when you have that mentality of, like, I'll try my best every single time, you can't mm-hmm. go wrong. Like, you know, you, right. the kid will know you're trying your best also because, I mean, kids don't even care, right? They're just like, yeah, I just want you here. They don't even care if you do things perfectly or anything like that. They just want you to be present with them and like do whatever that you're supposed to be doing there. But um, there's no no pressure from a kid. We put the pressure on on ourselves, like you said. Um, But we have to be okay with the mistakes that we make too, because it's going to happen. Right. And actually, I, I did write a blog post about us dads not being perfect. It's okay to not be perfect. But it's like some kind of hidden expectation as far as like men 
you make sure you have a job, make sure that you're the breadwinner, make sure that you are the protector of the family. And uh, if you're a stay at home dad, you know, like our, our culture, society. our society yeah. uh, criticize you and might call you lazy, but you might, or, or if you're not the breadwinner and that's not the case, like every family is different. And I, and I, and if, as far as like a message I want for other fathers to understand is that as long as you're trying, as long as, uh, as long as you're there supporting your wife or your partner and you're supporting your children and whatever way you just, that you decide to con for your contribution, it's okay. And, um, and I hope that takes some of the pressure off that we put on ourselves yeah. as well as what others may put on us as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important to yeah. remember. That's a really important message. That's a really important message. People have to um, feel comfortable with with themselves and not to take life so seriously, you know, because mm -hmm. everything should, well, you should try to have as much fun with it as possible. That's, I think, what matters more. Um, if you try to have fun, if you try to, like, bring that element of, like, we're doing this all together as a family, mm -hmm. you know, those are like the memories that kids stay with. Like, even when I think about my own family as a kid, like those are the things that were like the most special, not whether I got the most expensive toy or, you know, like what, who cares about that stuff? It was like, right. Oh, did we do everything all together? You know, did we have fun doing it? And, you know, creating all those memories is so important. So I think, that's what we need to focus more on instead of like worrying about like, did we buy the most expensive crib and do we have all the nursery furniture, you know, and everything needs to look so pretty. Um, you know, the kids don't even notice any of that. Like that's us trying to make everything look beautiful. But right, what the right. kids appreciate is that we did everything all together and you were there and we had so much fun. I remember when I jumped on you and I laughed and you carried me or whatever. Like those are the things that kids really remember. And, you know, because of just like you were saying with society, they put so much pressure. And I think more so now when you have, um, you know, all the beautiful pictures on Instagram and everything, people want things mm -hmm. to aesthetically look a certain way. And sometimes they get so caught up in that. You know, we have to have this beautiful family portrait. We have to have this beautiful um, pregnancy shoot or whatever. Like those are, it's pretty to have that. I'm not saying that it isn't. I love those things too. And I love when I see those beautiful pictures, but the stuff that really stays with kids is the mm -hmm. experiences that you actually have with them. And so when you focus more on like, let me be here with my child and it may not be the perfect thing that we're doing, or it might not be like the most extravagant thing. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, you can mm -hmm. go to the park with your kid and have the best time and they'll remember that forever because you were there with them and you actually were so present in everything that you did. Like that's the stuff that they appreciate. Um, so that's why, you know, I, I want dads to be more present because um, you know, even for me as a kid, I didn't have that much time with my dad, but when I did have him there, it was amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, those were so special. Those moments were like really, really special to me. Um, but you know, when we get so focused, like hyper focused on working so much and making sure that we have so much money to have this thing looking like this or to go on that vacation and stuff like that, then we kind of miss out on the really juicy, good stuff of life. Right. I uh I know with this whole uh coronavirus situation I and uh, and it's terrible you know with what's going on but I am appreciative of the fact that I was able to work from home and mm -hmm. uh, since March and then now I'm off for the summer and I go back to work at the end of the very end of July and I will never get another almost five month period to spend every day with my daughter uh, doing different things from uh watching her draw and how excited she gets when i because now she's two so she wants every time if i'm on my phone she'll take my phone out my hand and put a marker in my hand and she wants me to write her name or grab a book or um 
have a dance party or yeah. whatever. And and it's something that I know that uh, I'm, I'm going to cherish and those are memories that's going to stick with me forever. One thing I was thinking of when you were talking about us buying the most expensive gifts uh, and about experiences, we could buy the most expensive uh, toy or something for our child and guess what they're playing with? They're, the box. They're the box. Yep, they have the more most fun with the bots and the toys more for us and our own gratification. Yeah, you know, um, because I I think a lot of parents do get caught up. I want to give my child what I didn't get, mm-hmm. but but then your the child your child is having more fun with the bots that it came in. Yeah, it's true. It's really true. I I always tell parents like forget about spending all this money on stuff. They grow out of it so quickly and everything. Like put it towards a college fund or something like that. That's gonna be more important later on. Like I know, I know we love to have everything looking gorgeous all the time, but it's just like it's not as important as people make it out to be. It really isn't. Like it takes time to learn that because you know it's it's something like it's almost an expectation at this point um but let go of those things and i'm happy that you brought up the whole like being at home um for this time period where you know so many crazy things are happening in the world but then you know something like this is such a blessing where you get to bond Mm -hmm. more and that's something that we would have never had right unless something like this happens. So it's so nice to to focus on what's really positive right now. And I'm I'm really happy that you brought that up because that is one of the most important things that's happening right now. And I, I wish that people would shine the light on that a little more instead of focusing on I mean there's so many crazy things happening in this world right now, right? There's so many things happening yes. right here in America. Um and we're just we're really lucky that we get to be close together and teach our kids what's really important right now right and to me that uh is spending time with my daughter and uh even like teaching her different things like we're right now we're in the process of potty training and yeah. the fact that <laughs> it's a good time I for can, that <laughs> yes like you know if i'm if i was at work this whole time uh you know i'm working from home I, it was to be someone else going through that whole motion, but now I'm, the, I'm able to be the person and, you know, mom as well, being the person to walk her through that and to, I am the person that is able to congratulate her when she goes potty on the, on the toilet. And, yeah. uh, and it's so awesome to be able to do the, be able to experience that. Cause now that's a memory that I'll be able to cherish for the rest of my life, okay. despite this whole crazy situation. Um, but I, I do believe that there's some positive out of it, at least from my, in, from my perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Cameron, I want to thank you so much for doing this with me. It was awesome. I think we should do many more. <laughs> oh, wow. um, but I want you to let everyone know where they can find you in the blog. Okay. Um, so Supportive Fathers, if you, you can look us up on Instagram um, at Supportive Fathers uh, is our handle. You can look us up on Facebook. You can type in Supportive Fathers. Twitter uh, is at, at SUP, S-U-P-P, Fathers. And then you can also uh, go to the blog, find and subscribe at SupportedFathers.com. I, we post at least once a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have some other projects I'm not going to release just yet. Oh, uh, for, a <laughs> yeah, it's a secret. It's a secret. I have a couple Keep other projects. I'm gonna be working. What's that? I said, keep us in suspense. <laughs> oh, yes. I have a couple other things I'm going to add to it. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be uh, a great perspective on parenthood and uh, and as far as advice for fathers. It's not just advice for fathers. Mothers can t- uh, have some takeaways mm-hmm. from it as well. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I talk about self-care. I talk about um I think I actually had one of my buddies write about his uh, his spirituality journey, and not necessarily oh, related to being able to yeah. connect with your, within yourself. Um, I've wrote about managing your anxiety, or um, I'm teaching my daughter Spanish, so I mm-hmm. talked about ways that you can. I'm not a native Spanish speaker; I've been learning myself, 
but talked about ways to incorporate that into your home if you want your child to be able to speak another language. So I'm going to touch on all kinds of different topics. Um, I love yeah, that. I love that. You're very diverse with everything, and that's important. I agree, most definitely. I uh, I want the most out of life, and I want the most want her to get the most out of it too. So, and I want to help others be able to do that, or inspire others, or mm-hmm. whatever it is that they want yeah. to do. No, that's beautiful. I love everything that you're doing. You have my support um, because I, I love your message and the delivery of it. I think is you know is awesome. It's awesome that you're as brave as you are to be the best dad that you can be. I, you know, that for me alone, you just win me over with that part because as, as long as you put your heart into it, everything's going to be just fine. Like you're going to have an amazing relationship with your daughter forever, forever, which is like golden. Right. Um, you know, thank you so much because like I said, I know that you're away from home and that you took out this time to do this, but I'm so excited for other dads to discover you and to see all the wonderful things that you have available. Um, and, uh, I agree, you know, moms should get on too, because it's important to even get like the dad's perspective because then you understand, you know, your partner better also. So it mm-hmm. helps, it helps for you to put yourself in their shoes and understand what's going on with them um and then you can help them out better too you know when you understand a little better and can relate on a different level then the partnership becomes better right and we're we're go ahead oh yeah i was gonna say we're a team you know mom and dad or mom uh dad and partner we're a team and we're a team to make this one have our relationship become stronger and as well as how to best help support our children Yes. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much, Cameron. I really want to tell you, oh, let me be the first one to tell you happy Father's Day because that's coming up soon. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Cameron from Supportive Fathers. He's awesome. Please go check him out right now. To listen to more podcasts, please visit us at drdavinalopez.com and follow us on Instagram at drdavinalopez. Thank you for listening. Please keep in mind that all advice given in this podcast is general information. To understand your specific situation, you must consult with your pediatrician.